Hello and welcome to the Comlex and USMLE Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures, blog posts, and podcasts to help you get through medical school. Let's talk about diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis mainly precipitates because of an insulin deficiency. Okay, And there's three key things about the physiology that would help you in terms of understanding what causes diabetic ketoacidosis. There's hyperglycemia because of the increased hepatic production of glucose, diminished glucose uptake by the peripheral tissues, and insulinopenia and hyperglucagonemia. Both of those in combination lead to hyperglycemia. Also, there's ketoacidemia as one of the key characteristics of diabetic ketoacidosis. Patients come in and you realize that on your lab values there's ketones in the urine specimen and that's one of the key findings. So the keto acid is acetoacetic acid and the byproduct is acetone. The non-keto acid is beta hydroxybutyric acid and because of the increased lipolysis and hepatic ketogenesis, the ketoacidemia is caused. There's also reduced ketolysis by the insulin deficient peripheral tissues. So what happens in diabetic ketoacidosis is there is a decrease in the excretion or the lysis of the ketones and there's increased production by the liver. Now, the last thing in terms of understanding the physiology of diabetic ketoacidosis is the concept of osmotic diuresis and dehydration which are due to the hyperglycemia. What happens is that on average the water deficit is around 5 liters in a patient, sodium is around 500 millimolar, potassium is 400, and chloride is 400. It's important to remember that in diabetic ketoacidosis there is a variety of causes such as an infection, a pneumonia or a urinary tract infection, or inflammation from pancreatitis or cholecystitis. Also, the insulin deficiency is due to the failure to take enough insulin. And sometimes ischemia from the myocardium or infarction from the cerebral blood supply can lead to diabetic ketoacidosis. Patients who are chronic alcoholics and uh, drug abusers with intoxication can produce diabetic ketoacidosis. In addition to iatrogenic causes like thiazide use or glucocorticoids. Keep in mind that initial presentation of type 1 diabetes um, is the key presentation for DKA. So DKA occurs in type 1 diabetics and very rarely in type 2 diabetics. There is an increase in glucagon and a decrease in insulin. Also, the hyperglycemia is due to the increase in gluconeogenesis and the increase in glycogenolysis and a subsequent decrease in glucose uptake into the cells. Mortality is 5% in patients under 40 and it can be as high as 20% in the elderly. And it's estimated that 5 to 8 episodes per thousand um, are at risk for diabetics annually. So if you're diabetic, you may get up to five to eight episodes per thousand people. One of the more common serious complications um, is that of insulin pump users who typically um, have unrecognized pump failure. And so one per 80 uh, months of treatment typically have this as one of their causes. The essentials for diagnosing diabetic ketoacidosis is important to understand uh, for the board exam and while you're seeing patients. Diabetic ketoacidosis has an acidosis which means the pH is less than 7.3, the bicarb is less than 15 milliequivalents per liter, serum positive for ketones as well as in the urine you can find ketones, and elevated anion gap which can be variable because DKA can occur without a anion gap. Patients also have hyperglycemia with um, a level greater than 250 and there's really no correlations between the severity of hyperglycemia and the severity of ketoacidosis. All this can present to you um, in terms of clinical manifestation in a patient in the form of polyuria, polydipsia, dehydration, 
and the dehydration typically will cause tachycardia, hypotension, dry mucous membranes, and a decrease in skin turgor. Patients have nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain, as well as an ileus at times. There's Kussmaul's respirations, which are the key in DKA, and they are the deep, rapid breathing, which are done to compensate for the metabolic acidosis and with the odor of acetone, that's characteristic sign on physical exam as well. Patients also complain of change in mental status, from somnolence to stupor, and finally the late changes including coma. So these clinical findings are important to understand. And keep in mind that the ketosis in DKA is due to the inability to utilize glucose. And so the mobilization and oxidation of fatty acids along with an increase in substrates for ketogenesis and an increase in a ketogenic state of the liver leads to decreased ketone clearance. So the key things that we talked about for ketosis are decreased clearance and an increase in the substrate for ketogenesis. Those two key things lead to increase in the ketogenic state of the liver. Now, how do you actually diagnose DKA aside from focusing on the pH values and on clinical findings? One of the key things you want to look for is gly glycosuria and typically it's high 4 plus and ketonuria so ketones and glucose in the urine hyperglycemia ketonemia low arterial pH low plasma bicarb are all important lab findings in DKA. Patients come in and they have this increase in anion gap with metabolic acidosis and it can occur later and also sometimes they present with a non-anion gap acidosis because of the urinary loss of the ketones. Keep in mind that patients may also have elevated serum amylase, elevated serum potassium, and that's mainly, um, you know, even in, even in cases where the body is able to uh, deplete the total body potassium. So that's a key sign. Leukocytosis is common. Um, and patients who are typically hyperthermic, well, in these cases, you should suspect an infection because DK patients are usually hypothermic. Also, an elevation in BUN and creatinine, which is a sign of the dehydration. Sometimes patients have pseudo-hyponatremia, that is corrected sodium, which equals the measured sodium plus 2.4 times the measured glucose minus 100. We mentioned the increase in amylase, and that's present even if the patient does not have pancreatitis. So that was a review of some of the key lab findings that you'll see in patients who present with diabetic ketoacidosis. Again, for making the diagnosis, clinical sign of polyuria, polydipsy, and dehydration, you look for nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and an ileus, Kussmaul's respiration with the odor of acetone and a change in mental status are the key clinical manifestations. The diagnostic studies we reviewed included a anion gap metabolic acidosis, um, or it can present with non-anion gap acidosis, ketosis with positive urine and serum ketones, the key ketones acetoacetate and beta-OH butyrate, those are the key ones you want to remember for the boards, increase in glucose, increase in BUN creatinine as a sign of dehydration, um, the decrease in the potassium and leukocytosis along with an elevation in amylase. Now that was a board review for the COMLEX and USMLE board exam on diabetic ketoacidosis. Please visit complexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures and good luck in your preparation for the boards.